Kenny. I'm gonna come late, see if I get some, a few more people. But apparently not. Alright, uh, my lessons for this morning is tied into my sermon. And let us go to Matthew chapter 1. Matthew chapter 1, verse 26. Did you pray already, brother? Yes, I did. Yes. Thank you. It's not 26, I'm sorry. It's 22. Me too. I'm going to read from verse 18. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. And Joseph, her husband, being a just man that wanted to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. So all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child, and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. <clears throat> Are you reading from Luke too? <laughs> I know you're reading from Matthew. Yeah, this is an NIV. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, it's an NIV you're reading from. I know that we we know that Jesus was not born on the 25th of December. This <clears throat> morning lesson is to establish why Jesus was born. Um, the festivity uh, of December the 25th is surrounding his birth. I think we as the Church of Christ, we celebrate Jesus Christ um, you know, birth, death, burial, and resurrection um, every first day of the week. But let us put this in a proper perspective. When you think about a child, and I never understood this until I myself became a father. A, a child that is not taught properly is no better than <coughs> a wild animal. I'm going to say that again. 
a child that is not taught properly is no better than a wild animal. You see, a wild animal, in order for it to become domesticated, it has to be taught. It has to be trained a certain way. Um, like any animals on the planet of this earth, if they are in the wild, you can't pet them or you can't lead them the way how you would like to lead them. They have their own way of life and their own way of doing things. The birth of Christ signifies a renewal of the children of God. The birth of Christ signifies salvation. It signifies uh, hope and eternal life. But there's something very, very, very significant about the birth of Christ. And whose he is, he is the Son of God. How was Jesus Christ as a child modeled? How was he molded? And how was he shaped? It's very important to the way how we are developed or when Christ meets you and I, if you understand what I'm saying. When Christ meet you and I, meets you and I, according to John chapter 3, when Nicodemus went to him, he said, in order for you to go into the kingdom of God, you have to be born again. <laughs> There are some significant parallels that I'm going to try to put in place with the text which I just read. And as I lie here in my bed and try to conceptualize this, I'm going to um, contrast the physical birth with the spiritual birth and understand that where Christ meets you, when you are born again, you are a suckling. You are a babe in Christ. And in order for you to be trained properly, in order for you to develop and be shaped and be molded in Christ, God is your daddy, is your father. So let us explore this this morning. <coughs> When Jesus was born, you know the story, he had to go into Egypt and he, you know it has to be fulfilled, he come out of Egypt. In Luke chapter 2, say something that you do not understand, um, feel free to interject, feel free to say I do not understand. In Luke chapter 2, And verse 41, see if you want to read from, you know, I have the, uh, the, the NIV, I am, you have the King James Version? I have King James. You have the King James Version? Right? Yeah, you can read from verse 41, please. Verse 41? Yeah, yes. That's Luke chapter 2. 
Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. Mm -hmm. Continue. I'm sorry. Continue. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. And when they had fulfilled the days as they returned, the child Jesus turned behind in Jerusalem. And Joseph and his mother knew not of it. Mm -hmm. But they, supposing him to have been in the company, went a day's journey. Yes. And they sought him among their kinfolks and acquaintances. Right. And when they found him not, they turned back again to Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass that after three days they found him in the temple sitting in the midst of the doctors, mm -hmm. both hearing them and asking them questions. Yeah. And all that they heard him, all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. Mm -hmm. And when they saw him, they were amazed, and his mother said unto them, Son, why hast thou thus dealt with us? Mm -hmm. Behold thy father, and I have sought thee sorrowing. And he said unto them, Is it that ye sought me? Was ye not that I must be about my father's business? Mm -hmm. And they understood not the saying which he spake unto them. And he went down with them, and he came to Jerusalem, uh, to Nazareth, and was subject unto them, but his mother kept all these sayings in her heart. Mm -hmm. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and favor with God uh, and man. Amen. If, if you want a child, if you have a child, this is what you want a child to do. And if you, if you want a child to get into trouble, you want him to get into trouble being about the father's business. <coughs> Hello, somebody. Huh? That's the kind of child you want. But the last verse is the verse I want you to pay attention to, 52. Can you read that again for me? 42? Uh, yeah. Is and it 20 or 52? 52. 52. 52. Yeah. And Jesus increased. Jesus in increased. Read on. In wisdom and stature. In wisdom and stature. And in favor. With and God. in favor with God. And man. And man. Now, 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 now I want to spend maybe five minutes right here. He was born, and he was born for a purpose to deliver mankind. But as he developed, he's developed himself, developing himself as a child about, what, 12 years old. His focus was on the Father. His focus was on Jesus Christ. <coughs> this is how he developed as a child. This is how the Holy Spirit, our God the Father, led Jesus as he grew. So it's, so it, it's, it's very important that we be intentional and deliberate with our children and our grandchildren as we raise them. Because this, this was deliberate, this was intentional from God the Father. You see, you see, as a Christian, uh, as a, as you're raising your kids, you can't, you can you can leave God out of the equation. It is a necessity. So, so, so Jesus was well rounded. You see, education is very, very important. And what you teach your kids, they are very, very what? Important in their development and in their growth. So, we're talking about the birth of Christ this morning. And how does that relate 
to our lives. And as newborn babes, when you and I become a child of God, what does Galatians chapter 3 says, uh, Brother Sid and verse 26 and verse 27, Galatians chapter 6, chapter 6 or chapter 3? I'm sorry, chapter 3 and verse 26 and 27. You can't go there for as many are baptized in the Christ in, in yeah. own Christ. Yes. They are called what? For as many has been baptized into Christ, they are called what? Sons, they called? Sons of God. Sons of God. Children of whom? Of whom? God. So, so as big as you and I are, or, or whenever you met Christ, you become what? A babe in whom? In Christ. And when you become a babe in Christ, it is Christ Jesus who leads you and I. First Peter chapter uh, 2. First Peter chapter 2, Brother Anthony, can you find that for me, please? First Peter 2? Yes. Verse, um, read from verse 1. Wherefore lay it aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings. Yes. Newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. There you go. We, 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 the newborn babes design, he, he uses the, the scripture as a metaphor like milk because when a child is born, they need that milk. The milk, the breast milk, is the most nutritious milk important milk to the child, it fights off bacteria, it develops a child's bone and brain and everything. You know what I'm saying? So when we are born, our pursue God is teaching us, we need to pursue godliness and righteousness to develop our whole body. It is God who is the Father, who is nurturing us so that we can grow and be healthy and strong in his word. So, church, it's very important that we continue to feed on the word of God. Because it is only by the word we are going to be nourished. It is only by the word we can live healthy, spiritual lives. It is only by the word we can fight off the things of Satan. In 1 John chapter 4 and verse 1, he said, uh, from verse uh, the four it said, test all spirit. He said, test all spirit. In order for us to test all spirit, we have to be, we have to be spiritually strong. We have to be spiritually healthy for you to test all spirit and come out on the winning side. You understand what I'm saying? Okay, you have to be knowledgeable. You have to be feeding on the word of the Lord. So that whenever you test all spirit, you will see whether they are antichrist or they are not of Christ. You can't test all spirit and be and you are incompetent. You can't test all spirit and you're not feeding on the word of the Lord. It's going to destroy you. What are we testing all spirits for? Huh? What, what, 
what are we testing all spirits for? There's more than that verse. Yeah, yeah, it's talking about anti-Christ. <laughs> Anti means against Christ. So when you test, you will know that if they are for Christ or against Christ. So I put the scripture in proper perspective. That's why I said anti-Christ. But the, 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 the essence of what I am saying is that if you are not nourished, be nourished and feeding on the word of God, you can't test all spirit and know what is against Christ and what is for Christ. Do you understand what I'm saying? And so we, we eat different foods to nourish our bodies and get vitamins and minerals and calcium and all these things so that we can the body can function properly. You eat, um, get vitamin A for the eyes and all these are vitamin C and all these different vitamins and irons and, uh, 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 to, to, to let you function properly. And as babes or uh, you know, growing in Christ, you just got to feed on the word of Christ. So Jesus left us an example. As a child, he developed, he, de he developed himself in, 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 uh, in terms of having a relationship with God as a tender age growing up. Absorbing and being taught by God. And as newborn babes in Christ, in order for us to be victorious, in order for us to reach heaven and make heaven our own, we have to, we have to continue to allow Jesus uh, uh, Christ, Father, the Father himself, to, to sustain us and, and, and to feed us and to guide us. Because this is the only way Jesus was very masterful in the scriptures. Hello? Whenever they tried to test him. So that you, that's how you knew he was reading and studying the Old Testament. Huh? Because he developed himself in the scriptures. Luke chapter 2 and verse 52 tells you that. The Bible said that we be no longer, in Ephesians chapter 2, um, 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 be children tossed to and fro by every what? Wind of doctrine. If you don't want to be tossed to and fro, you have to go, you have to, you have to pay attention to the word. You have to feed on the word. And so remember what I said, an animal that is not trained in my introduction is no better than a wild animal. Why did I make such a statement? If God is not training us and feeding us, if we don't allow God's word to direct us, we are going to run wild. With every wind of doctrine. You understand what I'm saying? We're going to run wild. If we don't um, 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 place ourselves on uh, the authority of the Almighty God, then God is not our Father. Somebody else is. Heaven will not be our home. Somewhere else is going to be our home. Are you with me? So understand, though we may be big, we are still feeding on the word of God. Though we may be an adult, we, are, we can be classified as babe in Christ. And nothing is wrong with that. But understand that the word of God is that which strengthens you and I. Understand this. And we are developing in Christ and we are growing in Christ when we abide by his will and follow his instructions. Understand that when Satan uh, um, bombards us with all kinds of problems, eh, 
It is the word of God that is going to be our defense and shield. Oh, I don't think you don't understand. The Bible said, put on the breastplate. Put on the helmet off. And we have the sword. Ephesians chapter 6. These metaphors are signifying this is the only way we are going to guard ourselves from the pits of hell is by abiding in his word. So I'm showing this contrast and hold on. Not because you are up in age, meaning you are mature in the world. We are still children of him. God and we are learning day by day, minute by minute, we are growing in Christ still. You understand what I'm saying? Got that started. That's why there's so much confusion in the world, is because people are not studying. And meditating on the word of God. Yeah, yeah. They're taking what old pastor so and so says. Yeah. And they don't even pick up the book for themselves. Yes. Yes. All right. Many so, times in God's word it says, meditate. Mm -hmm. Meditate. Yes. Yes. Philippians chapter 4, from verse 6 through to 8. So be anxious for nothing. And it tells you what you need to do. All right. So um, this morning Bible class, I wasn't. I'm not drawing it out. I'm just letting you see um, the two parallels and the spiritual birth and the physical birth and how Christ developed Himself as a child, um, growing, um, um, becoming a man and his purpose to the point where his own parents didn't understand what he was about. His own parents, and I didn't even, you know, but Mary being a mother, she understood because she knew that his child was special. She knew that he'd come for a purpose. And so she, she kept all of these things in her heart. An angel of the Lord had to, had to appear unto Joseph because he was a good man but he was also sorrowful to hear that his wife that is betrothed to him and in those days under the Jewish custom she could be stoned to death and that is why he said he was going to put her away what secretly and so the angel had to clarify certain things to Joseph to say hey your wife is still um, righteous, and God just shows up for a purpose. She's all right, okay? And so we, we have to understand you know, the way how Christ developed. And as we are born again into Christ as newborn babies, the way how we ought to develop. And God is training our minds. God is shaping our lives. God is molding us. To his will, not to our will, not to our perspective, not to our way of life, not to how we feel, but to his will. Once you have signed this covenant contract with him, you have given up over your life to him. And now you are a child of the king. And the king is going to lead you in his kingdom. And he is going to um, shape your life the way how he wants to shape it in his kingdom kingdom, kingdom stuff that we have been talking about. That we have been talking about. All right? So my lesson for the, my message for this morning is tied into this lesson. And so I'm going to elaborate in the message this morning and, 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 and show you some stuff um, as a child developing. All right? Thank you for your time. God bless you.